The Prime Minister is in our province today. Justin Trudeau will be at a grocery store in Regina this morning and speaking with students later this afternoon. And there's lots to talk about when it comes to federal-provincial relations. As usual, Premier's furious at any talk of Ottawa re-examining provincial mineral rights. For more on all of it, we've reached the Prime Minister. Justin Trudeau is on the line now. Good morning, Prime Minister. Yes, good morning. Just one moment, please. Thank you. Hi, Prime Minister. Uh, hi there. What brings you here today? Oh, listen, it's a great opportunity to uh, meet with folks here in Saskatchewan. I'm doing a, a town hall later. Uh, I'm also talking about the budget and how uh, we're delivering on affordability, on great jobs for the future, on health care and dental care, all things that matter to people here in Saskatchewan, and it's, uh, it's great to be back. Did you tell the Premier you were coming? Uh, yeah, we were looking at uh, trying to meet with him this afternoon. Unfortunately, he's, he's out of town apparently, but I'm always happy to meet with him. Last time you came, he said you didn't mention it. Uh, well, listen, I, uh, I'm always happy to speak with Scott and always happy to work on, uh, on things together. And uh, I was uh, hoping to be able to meet with him today, but unfortunately, like I said, uh, apparently he's out of town. You mentioned affordability in your budget. How does that budget help the middle class? Well, a big piece of it uh, is putting forward our, our grocery rebate. We know that even as inflation is coming down, getting down to around ten dollars, uh, uh, getting down to around three uh, percent this summer, according to, to many experts. Uh, Grocery prices and food prices are still high for lots of families, which is why we're moving forward with the grocery rebate that will help uh, eligible families up to $467 to, uh, to take some of the sting out of uh, grocery bills. We're also moving forward on extra supports for students, uh, more supports for seniors, more, uh, uh, more supports for small businesses with lowering credit card fees, lots of things in there on top of what we're doing around child care here in Saskatchewan. You're down to $10 a day, and that's because of federal investments, and that's saving hundreds of dollars a month for uh, for families with kids under six. How's the grocery rebate help the middle class? That's aimed at lower income Canadians, right? Uh, actually, it's 11 million Canadians, uh, so it's uh, low income and uh, a number of middle class families who, uh, who are facing challenges. Uh, that's something that we know people need help with. But as, as you know, we need to be targeted in our uh, in our supports for people because uh, the the danger of of uh, re reinvesting in in higher inflation is uh, is something everyone wants to avoid. The focus on the middle class is very much on the ten dollar a day childcare, which helps all families. Uh, the increase of the Canada Child Benefit is is uh, linked to inflation, and that's helpful for people. The Climate Action Incentive actually is going to be delivering checks of three hundred and forty dollars uh, to the family of four. Uh, here in, uh, in, in Saskatchewan tomorrow. Uh, so that's going to help the middle class as well as we fight climate change. That's, that's $1,300 a year uh, to families in Saskatchewan to help uh, offset the, the cost of pollution pricing and continue to fight climate change. You've probably heard that Saskatchewan's Premier is among Western Premiers furious with comments made by your Justice Minister. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's important to stick to the facts. Um, the Justice Minister got a question from uh, an Indigenous leader about uh, how we were moving forward on UNDRIP, and he talked about how important it is uh, to make sure that federal uh, legislation uh, aligns with the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. At no time did he ever suggest we were going to be uh, looking into or, uh, or uh, going after areas of provincial jurisdiction. I think it's really important that people... Uh, uh, people People not uh, not overreact or spread informa- misinformation on on things like this. Well, let's listen to what your minister said. The the point about the the natural resources transfer agreement, um, Chief Merkel did it indirectly. Uh, Chief Brian did it directly, um, and you're on the record for that. I obviously can't pronounce on that right now, uh, but I do commit to looking at that. Um, it won't be uncontroversial, is, uh, is the only thing I would say with a, a bit of a smile. What do you hear him say there? Uh, I'd say he, he knows that we need to work with Indigenous communities on making sure that we're moving forward on reconciliation. But uh, there is a, a full understanding uh, that the, the changing the Constitution has never been uh, in, in, our, uh, in our approach. Uh, and to take... 
to take a, a context like that or a quote like that and uh, raise it into a level of fear mongering. But he mentioned, there, he meant, your, your, but sir, but your you minister mentioned natural, the natural sorry, resources. Stephanie, Stephanie, what, what you could also do if you wanted to play a clip is play the clip of him explaining unequivocally in the very next, uh, uh, the very next day that that is not his intention at the all. The next we day? We are not going aware to that. Yes. When he put out a statement, he, he said very clearly that this is not something that we are looking at and we are not going after uh, provincial jurisdiction. But we are very much hoping that provinces uh, like the Prairie Provinces actually step up themselves on recognizing the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People and take reconciliation seriously. This is something that we are absolutely going to be pushing on. So I'm, I'm always happy to talk with the premiers about how we're going to move forward in part for everyone who lives in Saskatchewan. But, sir, he wasn't uh, talking about a UN declaration. He was talking about the Natural Resources Transfer Agreement. Uh, no, he was talking about the UN declaration. Well, he said the Natural the Resources Resource. Transfer Agreement in the clip. Yes, he did. Yes, he did, because that's part of uh, part of the universe of things that impact on Indigenous peoples. But that is not uh, an area of of uh, area that the federal government is going to uh, take away from the provinces. Well, then, we why are, did he however, say it with a bit of a smile? Why did he say it with a bit of a smile? Because he knew uh, that there was a risk that what would happen, uh, that, that what happened would actually happen, which is uh, that uh, premiers would uh, jump all over that and try and make it another story about attacks on provincial jurisdiction, when indeed it's actually being serious about working uh, with premiers, with, with Indigenous leaders, on economic reconciliation well, the way people if want he, it. If he knew that was a risk, why wasn't he crystal clear in the moment? When, when one is engaging uh, with Indigenous leadership, when you're talking about the things that we need to do uh, to fix a system that for too long has been colonial, has been um, uh, terrible in terms of uh, supporting and partnering with Indigenous peoples, um, you know, you, we will always make clear that we are taking seriously our responsibilities under, under the UN rights on the, uh, Declaration of uh, for Rights of Indigenous People and uh, of our own uh, of our own constitutional obligations towards uh, indigenous peoples and we will always be there uh, to work in a thoughtful way with the provinces uh, on issues that matter to people and that's that's what we will continue to do what do you make of claims from first nations leaders that mineral rights were never included in the treaties it was the depth of a plow and that's it um, I, I think I think there is uh, there are lots of conversations to have on this. But if you want to talk about mineral rights, Stephanie, one of the things that I've been really excited about uh, is what we're doing around critical minerals, uh, around uranium and potash. I was just in uh, in uh, uh, talking with the Prime Minister of, of uh, Ukraine uh, a couple of days ago, who just uh, oversaw the signing of a huge contract with Cameco uh, to make sure that Ukrainian uh, nuclear reactors for the next decade and more are powered by Ukraine. Uh, uranium from Saskatchewan. That's a really big step. We're moving forward on rare earth elements. I was meeting in Vital Metals uh, just a few uh, a few weeks ago, uh, the plant in Saskatoon that we're investing in to make sure we're uh, solving for the challenges of shortages of rare earth elements around the world. There are huge investments coming in potash because Russia and Belarus are no longer reliable suppliers for uh, allies around the world. And Canada and Canadian workers and resource workers here in Saskatchewan and across the country are going to benefit from the kinds of things uh, that we're doing to make sure we're investing in, in the kind of minerals future that we need. What thought have you given to Regina continuing to train members of the RCMP at Depot? Uh, obviously, uh, Depot is a historic and important uh, current institution in the RCMP. The Mass Casualty Commission, following the terrible incidents three years ago in, in Porta Pic, uh, put forward a lot of recommendations that we're gonna, going to look at and respond to responsibly uh, in partnership with the RCMP. I've, uh, I've had the opportunity of visiting Depot a few times, and it is uh, extraordinary in the great work that it does. When might you let people know if uh, that model will continue or be wound down as the Commission recommended? 
Uh, we've, uh, we will continue to, to, uh, to do the work of analyzing the 3,000 pages of reports from the Mass Casualty Commission and, and respond soon to, uh, to how we're, we can move forward. Have you heard what the Saskatchewan Liberal Party is doing with its name? No, I haven't. They're changing it. Um, the 80% or so of party members voted to drop the Liberal from their name to better appeal to people here. What's that tell you about your party's brand in this province? I don't know. I could assume that uh, Conservatives are doing terribly since they changed their name to the Saskatchewan party. What are you going to do to make a relationship between your government and the provincial government here better? Oh, listen, we've been able to work really well on issues that matter to people. The $10 a day child care that uh, families in Saskatchewan are getting now uh, is because of a good, uh, good relationship between uh, the Premier and, and myself. Uh, the way we're moving forward uh, on health care. Uh, Scott Moe was one of, the, one of the three Premiers who did a lot of work towards getting uh, to this historic $200 million investment in health care over the coming years uh, that will involve more family doctors for people here in Saskatchewan better access to mental health care, better metrics and, 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 uh, and data collection uh, for people here and right across the country. These are things uh, that we're able to work on together, and I will continue to work, whether it's on critical minerals, on great jobs for the future. There's lots of things that I'm going to continue to work on to deliver for people in Saskatchewan. Thanks for making time for us this morning. Always a pleasure, Stephanie.